At the rate of fifty is working. Good evening to everyone and welcome to today's session. Chai Pe Charcha with Dr. Murli Bharbaj. Saumi Mandal, Snowbar Vani. Can you get a voice loud and clear? Balakrishna, Surya Prabha, Mithil Kirani and many more. <coughs> Is the voice loud and clear? Yes. Uh, yes. Let's continue our discussion on the neat PG neurology. I'm very happy to see all of you online and uh, we hope that today we will be able to complete significantly a good number of topics. What is the most common cause of the intracranial hemorrhage is one of the favorite questions of the examiner. So out of all different types of hemorrhage that you know, it is the intracerebral hemorrhage as what you can see here, a bright white area on the CT scan classically is considered to be the most common between subdural, subarachnoid, epidural and intracerebral hemorrhage is what you need to basically remember. Then further intracerebral hemorrhage, what is the most common cause was the favorite question repeatedly asked in the NEED PG. 12, 13 and also 14. <coughs> Very easy question. So it is a hypertension which is 
abundantly available in the clinical practice after 45 everyone is hypertensive so this is a normal ct scan and this is the classical area which is called the capsuloganglionic area where you can have the bleed the intracerebral hemorrhage is what you need to basically remember come to the most common site for this hypertensive hemorrhage is a favorite question of the examiner it is a basal ganglia this is the classical location where the basal ganglia what are basal ganglia in the entire ocean of white matter you have islands of gray matter and those islands of gray matter constitute what is called as the basal ganglia into which the bleed can occur so between the thalamus and the putamen the basal ganglia which is the commonest site between the two it is the ganglionic bleed which is much more common is what you have to basically remember so this is a classical location where you have the putamen you can see a normal uh, anatomical structure very important for your exam you have a caudate nucleus this is the thalamus the bedroom and then you have globus pallidus the basal ganglia you also have substantia nigra and the subthalamic nucleus and this is the putamen is what you need to appreciate so the bleed can involve this strip you know can you see this strip this is the strip which is called as the internal capsule so the bleed can only be limited to the internal capsule or it can be there in the subthalamic nucleus or it can involve the thalamus or substantia nigra or the putamen anywhere the bleed can be there now tell me doctor if there is a bleed into the putamen uh uh ravi is asking a question sir here it is looking very easy to answer correct but in exam sometimes questions i am not able to approach it is a very common situation all of us as students used to have that it feels very easy while you are solving but you feel little tough when you are in exam the simple reason is if you have a an answer before you and you are in the middle of a group if somebody else answers you also will align with that someone so that is the reason you feel it is easy oh i am able to answer that's good but is your answer coming with a definitive conviction that somewhere you read this you have revised this the moment you revise the topics the panchabhut i told you know dnb all india gitmer pgi aims question banks last 15 years if you are able to revise if you revise then there is nothing new there is no rocket science in uh, pg entrance even if your iq is 45 also you can become a topper no big deal only thing is you should you should catch up the common uh, thing so don't worry just enjoy the game solve the questions discuss with the friends pick up a set of 8 to 10 topics every day you are bound to win i'm uh, i'm uh, revouching for you so if there is a bleed in the putamen even there is some amount of compression happening in the internal capsule so contralateral hemiparesis some amount of bleed also will be hitting on the thalamus so contralateral sensory loss gaze paresis homonemus hemianopia ebullia loss of initiative is one of the very very important and characteristic feature then aphasia neglect apraxia they are all the features of the putaminal hemorrhage is what you have to basically remember very happy to see 120 online viewers we are becoming a very hot free channel every day meeting 6 to 8 to steal all those top 100 seats 
in the forthcoming NEET PG. The most common site of the brain hemorrhage is which location? So you should be sure that it is a few demand is the most common site where you get the brain hemorrhage. Durex hemorrhages, where do you see them? Of course, we see them in the brain, but why where do this where do you see? So basically, Durex hemorrhages typically happen into the matter, into the midbrain, very commonly. Whenever there is any tentorial herniation and there is a lot of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy that makes the small capillaries to bleed and lead to the development of the midbrain to suffer the hemorrhages which are called the Durex hemorrhages. So when you hang the people, why do they die? Because that hanging the constrictant, constricting force will lead to a hypoxic encephalopathy and lead to the development of the brain. That is what you need to remember. So whenever a temporal medial lobe is herniated, it leads to the compression. Temporal lobe is very closely related to the midbrain. It leads to the compression of the brain stem, especially midbrain and pons. And you find in the tentorial herniation, presence of the small bleeds in the midbrain in the pons, which is called as the Durex hemorrhages. One more example of how those Durex hemorrhages with the raised ICT with the tentorial herniation looks to be. <clears throat> Sweetie says there is no sync between audio and video. Is it? Can you? Is it for everybody? Is it there? It's fine. Can you please check whether? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, uh, is it fine? Can others punch? Shaban says uh, it's all right. Okay. This another example of the midbrain. No means no problem, right? Yes. Yes, fine. Okay. So this another example you can see. There is a herniation which is happening due to the raised intracranial tension, midline shift is there. Because of that, there is a hemorrhage happening into the midbrain, which is basically called the uh, typically the direct hemorrhage. Now, once more, examiner asked in need PG 2015-16. Uh, <clears throat> you will find where do you see direct hemorrhage? Whenever there is a tear of the basilar artery branches, then there is a hemorrhage into the midbrain and pond, which happens when there is any tentorial herniation and the raised intracranial tension. That is called the direct hemorrhage. Now, doctor, um, a patient presented with complaint of headache, worst headache of my life. Immediately, you should remember about subarachnoid hemorrhage. There are no focal neurological deficits. What should be your next important investigation? Don't push a contrast. Simply do a non-contrast CT. If you do that, you can see the blood which is filling the subarachnoid sylvian fissure. It is called that. Then you will also find the enlargement of the temporal form. And there is a trace of the intraventricular blood is what you are able to see. The classical features of the subarachnoid hemorrhage is what I like to underscore to all of you. Then subarachnoid hemorrhage also leads to certain ECG changes. Favorite question of the examiner. There will be ST segment, T wave changes, prolonged QRS complex, increased QT interval. And a prominently peaked and deeply inverted T waves is a very, very classical feature. <clears throat> now, in the subarachnoid hemorrhage, there is a normal CT. What is the next investigation that you want to do to prove so there is no blood in the sylvian fissure? 
that there is subarachnoid hemorrhage. How can you be able to prove is a very important question. We do what is called as a three tube test. If you take the CSF, if there is a subarachnoid hemorrhage, then the supernatant top layer will show xanthochromia in that CSF that you have tapped, which is classical of subarachnoid hemorrhage. So, if the imaging is negative, you need to do lumbar puncture. It is mandatory in the people with the subarachnoid hemorrhage. Now, if there is an elevated RBCs, actually in subarachnoid hemorrhage, what you do? You will take three tubes. In all the three tubes, if the RBCs are present equally, then it indicates subarachnoid hemorrhage. Why do you need to do the three tube test? Is a, a very important question. There are two possibilities. Either the blood cells which you are seeing in the uh, CSF can be due to a traumatic puncture or it can be because of the subarachnoid hemorrhage. If it were to be traumatic puncture, then out of the three tubes, the third tube will have low number of RBCs. But if all the three tubes have got equal number of RBCs, then you call it as a blood in CSF because of the subarachnoid hemorrhage. So, whenever you are suspecting subarachnoid hemorrhage, get a non contrast head CT. If it is negative, then you do the lumbar puncture. Look for the xanthochromia or the presence of the blood. And uh, if it is typically there, then you think of the possibility of subarachnoid hemorrhage, is what I want to underscore to all of you. Now, the next important topic is developmental disorders and malformations of the CNS is uh, the topic of interest. In Dandy Walker malformation, what are all the features that you see is the favorite question of the examiner. So, we find a hydrocaphalus, a posture for cyst and the deficiency of the cerebellar vermis whenever patients are having dandy walker cyst. So, let us talk about what is dandy walker cyst. It is a combination of malformations. The corpus callosum either it is stretched out or it is thin or it is absent altogether. Then there is a cyst. And there is an enlarged fourth ventricle. And the cerebellum is abnormally formed. And uh, that will lead to the compression of uh, the brain stem. So, this combination of the features which you see is called as the Dandy Walker syndrome, is what you need to remember. This is one slide that you need to bookmark in your. Uh, you medical act to have that memory and a reminder. So, the good news is within another one hour by about 8 30, 9 o'clock, the new version of the uh, U medical will be up by 8 8 30. You can download that. In that, courses is included in the dashboard. You click on the courses, then you will go to DNB and uh, need PG. Once you go to the DNB, you find subjects in the subjects, each subject, all the topic notes of the PowerPoint slides are there. You can bookmark, you can record your voice, you can be able to set up reminders for it to remind you regularly. You keep getting notifications. So, finally, we are able to bring the notes feature, and uh, by about 839, please kindly check the Google Play Store. Only Android version because iOS guys will take 3 4 days by the time they accept it and the, the iOS version comes in. So, that is the whole idea. <clears throat> so, there is a complete or a partial. Uh, Saumi Mandal is asking what kind of cyst, sir, it is. 
it is a cystic dilatation of the fourth ventricle that fills the posterior fossa and extends into the cisterna magna. That is the kind of a cyst is what you will finally find. And the posterior fossa become enlarged and there is a displacement of the tentorium cerebelli and there is a agenetic vermis of the cerebellum, the combination which is called the um, Dandy Walker syndrome is what need to be remembered. So here you can see the cystic dilatation of the fourth ventricle that is extending into the cisterna magna. This is the classical feature of uh, the Dandy Walker syndrome. Now the next question in the malformations. For X, Allergene disease of the spinal cord, kya hoda hai? Complete BMW question. It's a single liner in All India 2016 exam. AV malformations in the spinal cord constitute Foix Allergene disease of the spinal cord is what you need to basically remember. There are arteriovenous malformations in the spinal cord. And typically that lead to spasticity because of the compression of the corticospinal tract which are descending which is a pyramidal tract. Later on even androhorn cells are compressed and that lead to flaccid paralysis like an element. So that is a clinical presentation. So what you can see here is typically that AB malformations which are leading to the compression of the spinal cord in Foix. Alazuane syndrome is what you have to ultimately remember. If the corpus callosum nahi hai to absence, what will it lead to? There will be no neurological manifestations. Surprisingly, even if your corpus callosum is not working, be very sure. Sometimes it can be a presentation like that. Now, first of all, on a Imaging, neuroimaging. How does a corpus callosum look like and absence look like? You should be very sure. So, typically, this is called the rostrum, this is the genu, this is the body, this is the isthmus, this is the splenium. Corpus callosum go itna bada structure hai. If it is there in a normal person. MRI of brain is a child's play doctor. Ek do martabe agar aapke samajh mein aage kya kya structure kaha hai. And uh, you know that what section am I looking at. About half a dozen times you should uh, interpret the MRI brain. After that you, it's a child's play. No big deal. So, this is a sagittal T1 weighted MR where the corpus callosum supposed to be there is the missing is what you need to understand. You have done an ultrasound, banana sign is being found. Where do you see this banana sign is a favorite question of the examiner. So whenever there are any neural tube defects, then you get this banana sign like hydrocephaly. So, when you do ultrasound, can you be able to see and appreciate a banana, a banana shaped structure? This is another example where you can see the typical banana, you need to imagine in this. So, banana appearance of the cerebellum, why does it happen? It is due to the downward traction of the spinal cord and the brain stem. Whenever there are neural tube defects, typically that gives rise to the banana appearance. So those who have spina bifida, it will appear and uh, concurrently there will be a presence of a hydrocaphalus also along with it. And the overlapping of the bones, calvarial bones lead to the lemon sign. So this is what you have to be doubly sure. Lemon sign, banana sign, neural tube defects. Favorite question of the examiner. Right, doc? Now, 
वॉट इज ट्रू अबाउट हाइड्रन सेफली हाइड्रन सेफली में देर आर नो सेरेब्रल हेमिस्फियर दट इज अ क्लासिकल फीचर सो चिजन सेफली लिसन सेफली हाइड्रन सेफली ऑल दिस मैल फॉर्मेशन यू शुड बी डब्ली श्यूर डॉक्टर सो दिस इज हाइड्रन सेफली फीटल लाइफ में अगर इंटरनल कैरोटिड आर्टरी ब्लॉक हो गए तो पूरा सेरेब्रल हेमिस्फियर अंडर गो लिक्विफैक्टिव नेक्रोसिस एंड देर विल बी एन एब्सेंस ऑफ एनी सेरेब्रल हेमिस्फियर विद द प्रेजेंस ऑफ ओनली द फाल्स सेरेब्राइट थैलेमस सेरेब्रलम ब्रेन स्टेम ये सब रहता मगर बोथ द सेरेब्रल हेमिस्फियर विल बी मिसिंग इज द क्लासिकल फीचर कॉल्ड हाइड्रन सेफिल चाइल्डहुड में हमारा स्कूल टीचर बोलता है ना क्यों रे राम तेरे दिमाग काम नहीं कर रहे क्या दट इज हाइड्रन सेफिली हाँ सर इंटरनल कैरोटिड का ब्लॉक हो गया इसलिए हाइड्रन सेफिली हो गया सो देर बी इंटैक्ट सेम एट्रोफिक ब्रेन स्टेम एंड देर इज ए लिक्विफैक्शन ऑफ द ब्रेन पैरन खाइमा इन केस ऑफ दी हाइड्रन सेफली नाउ small posterior fossa where do you find small posterior fossa arnold cherry malformations mein posterior fossa will be very small dandy walker mein posterior fossa is enlarged so this you should not forget one of the favorite questions of the examiner so arnold cherry malformation kya hota hai पहले बार एग्जाम को प्रिपेयर एंट्रेंस को प्रिपेयर होते ना एडनॉल चेरी डैंडी वॉकर रोकिटैंसकी कस्टर ऑस्टर सिंड्रोम इट लुक्स फ्राइटनिंग बट एज यू कीप अंडरस्टैंडिंग व्हाट इज द कॉन्सेप्ट बिहाइंड व्हाट आर द क्लासिकल फीचर्स इन दैट टू थ्री ट्रिकी पॉइंट एग्जाम एवरी टाइम आस्क द सेम थिंग्स देन इट बिकम्स ए गेम फॉर यू सो दैट इज हाउ that is all about the preparation <clears throat> now herniation of the cerebellar tonsils through the foramen magnum is the feature of the arnold cherry a cerebellum hai cerebellar tonsils will undergo herniation through the foramen magnum then the obviously what are the structures which are which can get affected typically the brain stem the upper spinal cord cranial nerves which are emerging out of the brain stem all of them typically get affected in case of the arnold cherry malformation is what need to be remembered there's one once more to add a misery of life there is one type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 arnold cherry but all these are the problems in the cerebellum in the brain stem upper cervical cord and the bonial bony cranial bay foramen magnum which get enlarged because of this cerebellar herniation they are the important uh, uh, things to be remembered so arnold cherry malformation type 1 co occipito atlanto axial hypermobility syndrome is the name given ऑसिपिटो एक्लैंटो एक्सियल हाइपरबिलिटी यू कैन गेट ए लॉट ऑफ गुड नेम्स गाली देने के लिए बहुत मिलता एटलीस्ट एंट्रेंस के प्रिपरेशन के डेट पर अरे क्यों रे तेरा ऑसिपिटो एक्लैंटो एक्सियल हाइपरबिलिटी है क्या काम करो बोल सकते बाद में सो Until entrance is over, doctor. Only these questions, these answers, these mnemonics. Hey, go na hai. Idli khao, kuch yad rakna. Banana khao, kuch yad rakna. Lemon juice piyo, kuch yad rakna. Apple, apple core appearance of colon cancer. Next to one month, hey, he jab 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 karte hue bhai. Hmm? So those who have extreme joint hypermobility, like the Alladanlos. Marfans, they will have a craniocervical junction instability that lead to development of a non-cherry type one is what needs to be remembered. Type two, me kya hota? 
they also have a lumbar myelomeningocele that lead to the paralysis typically and uh, cerebellum and uh, cerebellar vermis significantly become more displaced into the spinal canal and uh, that lead to hydrocapnus etc etc type 3 they also have occipital encephalocele along with that type 4 complete cerebellar development will be lacking this is the typical combination which you need to basically remember so this is another example of theory 2 malformation so what you have additionally they also have a myelomeningocene and there is a small posture for some downward displacement of the cerebellum and the brain stem through the enlarged foramen magnum this is the typical combination called theory 2 malformation is what you need to remember which among these is a neuronal migration defect sandeep is asking sir aur ek bar bolo na banana kya hota hai fundamentally that cerebellum which got stretched out and ill developed in the neural tube defect gives that banana appearance but till that point you remember neural tube defect the banana sign lemon sign right there are n number of uh, youtube videos available just uh, banana sign maro wo ultrasound karke aapko banana sign dikha ke explain karne wale videos must hai right so sometimes some concepts when they are very boring to only read it let me tell you today learning is very easy lot of youtube videos lot of blogs images wikipedias people patients talking about their problem you ask ernol cherry child the mother will be giving an interview on the youtube so learning resources is not a problem today what is important motivation to learn is the challenge chai pe charcha with dr murli bharadwaj helps you to add that little motivation to our studying along with you so that the remaining time you have knowledge available at your fingertips and a click of the button let me tell you okay doc now which is a neuronal migration defect out of all this is what you have to uh, answer so schizencephaly is an example of migration defect so there is a split with a lacuna in the brain which is classical of schizen cephaly this is another example where um, ah, this is called as foreign cephaly right dog a fluid filled cavity in the brain of a baby who is born at 34 weeks no gliosis no calcification that means this lesion happened early in the gestation and any fluid filled cavity in the fetal or a neonatal brain is called as the porencephaly is what you have to basically remember that's right abhay raj chauhan is saying i am preparing for meet ug can i see this oh why not abhay is going to be our meet pg topper after five years so next week we are starting meet ug classes on a different channel uh, definitely abhay biology some of the human uh, biology chapters uh, i personally is going to teach uh, because i have a passion and few chapters in physics i love to teach any day uh, which i do to my uh, nephews niece everybody who are also preparing for the entrance exam so physics physiology cardiology they all are the same tempo kind of a subjects so doc uh, this is the story of foreign cephaly. Then what is schizen cephaly? Congenital cleft in the cerebral mantle is called schizen cephaly. So in a 20 week old fetus, there is a loss of the tissue in the territory of the middle cerebral artery uh, supply areas, which is called as schizen cephaly. So in the brain, typically you can see 
the uh, cleft in the cerebral mantle in case of the Shijan Sethali is what I want to underscore to all of you. In fact, the best way that you can inspire a neat UG MBBS entrance preparing student is along with the regular physics chemistry every day show him a bit of anatomy, a bit of pathology, a bit of uh, a short surgery and let him talk to some of the top surgeons online in the live class that inspires you to become a doctor. The dangling stethoscope in the white apron. Good. After joining we hate to wear it but until we join that was the inspiration. Even MD is also like that. Until we join we crave for it. After joining we get a fitting. Oh my god. Night duty ke baad night duty. Night duty ke baad night duty. Right. Upar se the chief will always be unhappy with you. And you are not sure whether he is going to pass you or not. So that's the reason happiest time is now. Right. So this is a bilateral shijan sepali. As what you can see classically. So this is a lateral view of the bilateral shijan sepali. Now in hydrant sepali the entire cerebral hemisphere is being replaced with a thin walled fluid filled cyst. So here the cerebrum is replaced by a cyst. That's what you can be able to see. And the head will virtually transilluminate because of that cystic degeneration of the brain matter and a severe brain atrophy uh, is what you are able to see sometimes. Those who have hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy from neonatal meningitis also will get the liquefaction of the brain is what I want to underscore to all of you. Now, what is a commonly used shunt in the hydrocaphalus treatment? is uh, uh, hydrocaphalus management. Ventriculoperitoneal shunt is the one which you will be using. So you will be passing a catheter which has got a reservoir, a valve and a and that will be passing into the peritoneum. So this is another example. The surgeons are getting ready to Put up a ventriculo peritoneal shunt in a baby who is having the hydrocaphalus is what you are able to classically see. Now, aqueduct of Sylvius K stenosis may. What are the ventricles proximal to the stenosis that undergo a enlargement because of the lack of drainage? Simple question. If you know where is aqueduct of Sylvius, you will answer this. Thoroughly well. Hum bahut khush ho gaye. 222 online viewers. Very good. Very good doctor. Right. So every day evening. 6 to 8. 8.30. In fact 5 to 8. We will have a free session. So please tell your friends. to Join. On every Sunday. Please don't forget. 9 to 12 you have a test. 4 point slideshow will run. 12 to 3, I will have a discussion on the question bank. So, doc, it is the enlargement of lateral and third ventricles you will see in the stenosis of aqueduct of Sylvius. So, these are the two lateral ventricles. This is the third ventricle. Lateral ventricle or third ventricle ke beech mein hone wala foramen kya hai? Foramen of Munro. Between third ventricle and fourth ventricle ke beech mein kya hota hai? Aqueduct of Sylvius hota hai. Agar iska block ho gaye to, then lateral ventricles and the third ventricles undergo an enlargement is what you have to basically remember. So, these are the lateral ventricles. You can easily understand. This is the third ventricle and this is the fourth ventricle. Between the third and the fourth here you are having the aqueduct of the sylvius is what you have to basically remember. So you must be very sure. So whenever that aqueduct of sylvius got enlarged, I mean stenosed, then the lateral ventricles and the third ventricle undergo a significant dilatation. Tomorrow's examiner may only give you this MRI and ask you to identify it is the Munro's occlusion or whether it is aqueduct of Sylvia's occlusion, you have to be very sure. 
Now comes the motor neuron disease, the next topic for the today's wonderful evening. Who is that famous scientist who had motor neuron disease? Most intellectual man who did who did, who wrote the book Discovery of Time. Yes, you should not forget when you start the motor neuron disease chapter. That's good. Uh, that's right. Stephen Hawkins. Every time motor neuron disease. The most today Stephen Hawkins. Conduction velocity of the nerve. It is not affected in which condition. If the nerve has to conduct, what does it require? It requires an axon to conduct and it requires a myelin sheet to insulate. So, purpose of the myelin is it will make the conduction get faster. Any demyelinating pathology of the nerve, the nerve, the neuropathies are demyelinating and axonal neuropathies. Axon ke andar wala copper rehta na, copper ke round plastic rehta na, plastic wala diseases hai ya copper wala diseases hai. Plastic wala diseases hota hai, demyelinating, copper andar rehta na, wire ke andar, uska hota hai, axonal neuropathy. So, conduction velocity is affected whenever the myelino, the myelin sheath is being affected is what you have to appreciate. So, in leprosy, hereditary neuropathy, acute um, inflammatory post-infectious demyelinating polyneuropathy called gullen -Barry. In all these scenarios, the conduction velocity of the nerve become diminished is what you have to basically remember. <coughs> Axonal neuropathy. Is my cow there? If you do the narrow conduction study, amplitude will decrease and uh, the conduction velocity is normal in axonal neuropathy are only slightly slowed. Amplitude of the electrical signal become diminished but uh, conduction velocity is normal. And uh, the morphology does not change. That is the features of axonal neuropathy. So, Whenever there is any decreased amplitude, you should always think a axonal neuropathy. Whereas, whenever there is any prolonged latency, de decreased narrow conduction velocity, you should think of demyelinating. So, if this is normal, there are two features. One is amplitude, other is the latency. From the baseline to the peak, that latency is what you calculate. Latency become increased and velocity become decreased in case of demyelinating neuropathies. Amplitude become decreased in case of the axonal neuropathies is what you have to basically remember. So, doctor, examiner, image based questions agar diye to. Came so recently video based this video based questions to the other. So he liked to know whether as a future neurologist, DM neurology after MD general medicine or MD pediatrics, do you know what is the meaning of amplitude and the latency in a narrow conduction study? So this is whenever the distal latency. It reflects the time for the conduction of the nerve and the neuromuscular junction transmission and the muscle conduction. All these things are reflected by the distal latency, the value of the distal latency. Then as amplitude, it reflects the summation of all the potentials of the functioning motor units. So whenever axonal neuropathy is there, then this amplitude becomes Diminish because when you summate the number of functional motor units diminish whenever you are having an axonal neuropathy. So, latency reflects the conduction and um, myelin, myelin function. Demyelination will 
delay the latency and decrease the conduction. Amplitude reflects the axonal pathology is what you have to basically remember. Now, predominantly motor involvement. How sa neuropathy may uh, hai? Sandeep is asking a very question. Sir, a video based questions practice kap karenge. Already you are doing, no, you are seeing my video and practicing questions. Finish video based practice questions. Ho gaya na? Uh. Basically, if you know the concept, ho image, ho video, ho cartoon, ho anything, animation, bhi ho sakta hai. so you should be in a position to answer. Simple, right? So, in case of the lead poison. Now, doctor, some of you are future neurologists. I am going to take you, make you the champions of neuropathy. There will be seven to eight questions asked on neuropathy, which you have to be hundred percent sure. Otherwise, you will go to Tirupati. So, predominant motor, kaha hota hai? Gulenberry, diabetic lumbar radiculoflexopathy, porphyria, lead intoxication, charcot meritur. Then paraneoplastic neuropathy, they are all predominantly motor is what you need to basically remember. And lead intoxication, don't forget. Now, axonal neuropathy is kya hai, demyelinating kya hai. Axonal ka to bahut bada lumbar history hai, lumbar list hai. Itna bada list hai, yaad rakhna mushkil hai, aapke doston ko yaad rakhne ke liye bolo. Demyelinating only two conditions. Two drugs, amidron, chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine lead to demyelinating. Everything else is axonal. This definitely examiner is going to ask you in the tomorrow's exam. You have to bookmark this in the U Medico and then make a revision. Cranial nerve involvement, where do you see? Classically, a Gulenberry syndrome patient, if he is also having external ophthalmoplegia, you should think of Miller Fisher syndrome. Then trigeminal sensory loss is a feature of the Jogren syndrome. Lower cranial nerve palsies, that is 8th, 9th, 10th, sub lower cranial nerve mold. Right? Along with gynecomastia, the combination you see in Kennedy syndrome, Foster Kennedy syndrome. Then facial nerve palsy is a feature of Gulenberry, leprosy, Lyme disease, sarcoidosis, HIV. You like it or you don't like it. Still, you have to bookmark it and set up a reminder in the U Medico app. Be very sure, invariably a question is going to come, which are all the conditions where you also find facial nerve palsy, you must be able to answer it like a parrot in the tomorrow's exam. Then mono neuropathies and mono neuropathy multiplex. In the leprosy or entrapment neuropathy or trauma, or single nerve is affected, like Allah. Allah neuropathy in uh, leprosy, posture auricular nerve neuropathy in leprosy, mono neuropathy. But non contiguous peripheral nerves, is heart may radial, us heart may Allah, us pao may sciatic, another uh, pao may sural nerve, multiple nerves are getting affected, which are not contiguous. That can only be explained if there is some pathology in the vessels which are supplying those nerves. In vasculitis, there is a diffuse hypoxic injury of multiple non contiguous nerves. That is called mononeuritis multiplex. Diabetes, vasculitis are the two important reasons leading to mononeuritis multiplex, is what you have to basically remember. Then, what are the causes for axonal versus demyelinating pathology? Sarcoidosis, Hansen's, diabetes, vasculitis, HIV, they are all axonal injury. Whereas, hypothyroidism, diabetes, then uh, hereditary neuropathy, they are all the ones where you have demyelinating pathology and the drug induced also, don't forget, hydroxychloroquine, amidron. Hmm? Then, there is an asymmetric weakness, that is motor weakness. 
absolutely no sensory organs. Where do you find? Motor neuron disease. Fundamentally, in motor neuron disease, there is a superoxide dismutase deficiency. If the superoxide dismutase is not there, oxygen free radical will lead to the injury of the androphone cells and the cranial nuclei, there is a bulbar nuclei. So, and also they will affect the pyramidal tract. That's the reason because pyramidal tract is involved, UMN, and because androcon cells are involved in the hypoxic injury caused by the, I mean, uh, not hypoxic, superoxide free radical injury caused by the, um, uh, seen in the motor neuron disease. You have both UMN LMN features in the case of the motor neuron disease. Please give me the board. So, what is the fundamental problem in case of motor neuron disease? In the spinal cord, you are having anterior cells, and there is a pyramidal tract which is descending from the brain called corticospinal tract. When there is a superoxide dismutase deficiency, oxygen free radicals they go and injure the anterior cells. And also the pyramidal tract. There's a reason you also have UMN features because of pyramidal tract involvement and androcon cells you have LMN features. But upper limbs will show the LMN features, lower limbs will show the UMN features in case of the motor neuron. Additionally, what will happen? Additionally, in the brain stem, in the brain stem, you are having the cranial nuclei, right? These are called, typically in the medulla, you call them as bulbar nuclei, bulbar nuclei. Now, this bulbar nuclei are controlled by the Cerebral hemisphere, just like corticospinal tract comes and controls the androcon cells. Even the nuclei of 8th, 9th, 10th, all these cranial nerves is also controlled by the corticobulbar fibers coming from both the sides. The left side corticobulbar, right side corticobulbar. Both of them have an inhibitory influence on the bulbar nucleus. So, that is the difference between the spinal cord and androcon cells versus the bulbar motor nuclei. What is the difference? Spinal cord may androcon cells are inhibited by the corticospinal tract coming from the contralateral side. For example, right side androcon cell that is controlling your hand is there. That is controlled by left side corticospinal tract which descends up to medulla and decussates to the right side. Only one side only will come and inhibit this androcon cell. Any interruption of this will immediately will lose, make the inhibition loss and typically they go into hyperreflexia. If you do a deep tendon reflex of your biceps, it will show hyperreflexia if there is any corticospinal tract interruption which is controlling and normally inhibiting the androcon cell supplying C6 androcon cell supplying your biceps. But in case of the bulbar nuclei, for example, if you are jerking your mandible, so there is no increased jerk. Increased jerk means just like your uh, biceps reflex, which is a deep tendon reflex, even your uh, reflex of your mandible, palate, everything uh, is a reflex. It's like a deep tendon reflex. So, there will be a UMN type of a paralysis where the inhibition is lost. And all the 
bulbar nuclei dependent deep tendon reflexes like palatal reflex the jaw reflex everything they become hyper reflexive only if there is a paralysis of there is a interruption of bilateral cortico bulbar fibers then only the interruption the inhibition is gone and all these reflexes become hyper reflex otherwise they don't they won't show the umn feature of hyper reflexia unless bilateral cortico bulbar fibers get interrupted so this bilateral cortico bulbar fiber interruption is called as pseudo bulbar pseudo bulbar palsy is what you need to remember then what is meant by bulbar palsy suppose if you have any decreased blood supply to the medulla or pons then the nuclei will get destroyed and that lead to eryflexia decreased reflexes of palatal jaw reflex and all that is called bulbar palsy bulbar palsy kya hota hai it is a element type of paralysis of those reflexes dependent on the motor nuclei of the medulla and pon is called as bulbar palsy bilateral cortico bulbar fibers if they are interrupted then only this inhibition is gone and all these deep tendon reflexes become hyper reflexive and show umn type that is called pseudo bulbar now you understood what is the difference okay shanti se aur ek bar ye video ko review karo samajh mein aa jayega theek hai so in motor neuro what conditions can lead to bilateral cortico bulbar fibers to get lost if you are having demyelinating pathologies like multiple sclerosis or if there is any degenerating pathologies like motor neuron disease bilaterally bilaterally cortico bulbar fibers which are normally inhibiting the bulbar nuclei they get interrupted and the bulbar nuclei become hyper excitable like a umn and that lead to hyper reflexia of the jaw reflex or a palatal reflex that is what you need to remember so because of this hyper reflexia of all your palatal uvular jaw facial and all this what will happen to you if i little scratch you also you become hyper reflexic everywhere and you start loudly laughing uncontrollably or you will start loudly crying that is called bulbar affect pseudo bulbar affect it is called as so a motor neuron disease patient if you happen to say how are you sir he smiles a bit then immediately he will go into uncontrollable crying you say sorry sir my kuch bhi nahi bola aapko chor ho rahe so don't be disappointed because he has got a sudden hyper reflexia of all the facial muscles palatal uvular everything became hyper reflexing that lead to what is called as a pseudo bulbar affect is what you need to remember so summarize doctor the story thank you sam singh says sir awesome absolutely my students are awesome teacher is awesome right so koi puche to kya bole aap bulbar palsy hota hai hey, element type when the bulbar nuclei are destroyed in the brain stem pseudo bulbar hota hai hey, bilateral cortico bulbar interruption and wo umn type hota hai hey, because of the loss of inhibition that is what you have to basically answer ashima thank you to say that surgery is over successful delivery of the concept and there is there should be a perfect academic organism doctor when you are doing work you know clinical work also when you enter the ward seven eight patients lumbar puncture kar diya isko intercostal drainage tube laga diya usko to intubate ventilator ke upar chada diya 
इंटूबेशन कर दिया एबीजी रिव्यू किया फट 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 द नाइट ड्यूटी मस्ट बाय मॉर्निंग यू शुड नॉट नो हाउ द सनराइज हैपन व्हाइल यू आर वर्किंग द मोमेंट यू कैन डू दैट दैट इज द डे यू जस्टिफाइड योर एग्जिस्टेंस बी वेरी श्योर राइट similarly when you are preparing for entrance exam also if you decided these are bloody 20 topics i'm going to finish because these are the things regularly causing my score to go down you have to finish them there will be hardly 10 to 12 important uh, points about each of the topics 120 140 points ko aap uh kabu mein lana hai that is all about 20 topic revision if you decide it you have to finish it you should not postpone it tomorrow karunga my day after tomorrow karunga abhi to uh, dinner party ko jaunga nahi hona that's not right okay so that's a, that's your uh, promise to me and one thing if there is any paresthesia if there is any bladder involvement it is not motor neuron disease मोटार न्यूरोन डिजीज में कभी भी सेंसरी इन्वॉल्वमेंट नहीं रहता अगर है तो इट इज अगेंस्ट द डायग्नोस ऑफ मोटार न्यूरोन डिजीज कभी भी स्पिंटर इन्वॉल्वमेंट ब्लैडर इन्वॉल्वमेंट बबल इन्वॉल्वमेंट नहीं होता अगर है तो इट इज नॉट मोटार न्यूरोन डिजीज दे आर द इंपॉर्टेंट एक्सक्लूशन इन द पार्ट ऑफ द डायग्नोसिस एंड डेफिनेशन ऑफ डायग्नोसिस इज व्हाट यू नीड टू बेसिकली रिमेंबर देन सिमेट्रिक वीकनेस without sensory loss what are the two things that come to your mind always these are the questions you will ask the patient is the weakness only one side is the weakness both the side is there anything which is uh, numb or anywhere so no numbness no sensory loss but symmetrical weakness think of fino muscular atrophy and uh, hereditary motor neuropathy but what is the difference distal weakness is a feature of hereditary motor neuropathy proximal and also distal muscle weakness what are proximal muscles shoulders are the proximal muscles buttocks thighs are the proximal muscles so if you want to comb the hair if you have hair then your shoulder should work a patient with proximal muscle weakness cannot be able to comb similarly if you want to get up from a squatting position your uh, uh buttock should work thigh should work you can't be able to get up from a squatting position that is proximal muscle weakness if you want to do any fine activity with your fingers that is distal muscles sewing the things knitting the things etc patient will have inability to do that that is distal similarly if you are able to walk with balance with your foot then your distal foot muscles should work so doctor if the patient says i am having tripping attacks that means distal weakness always what is the rule myopathies lead to proximal muscle weakness neuropathies lead to distal muscle weakness that is a very important principle but if you take spino muscular atrophy it leads to both the proximal and distal muscle symmetrical weakness without sensory loss that describes it similarly hereditary motor neuropathy like any other neuropathy classically lead to distal weakness is what i want to underscore now if it is symmetric but predominantly motor how that acute post infectious demyelinating polyneuritis idp and cidp gulen barry bay symmetrical weakness predominantly motor then where do you see predominantly sensory loss i'm telling you each of this is a favorite mcq one question out of seven or eight questions out of 30 medicine questions come from neurology and out of the seven or eight neurology one is from neuropathy right doc so leprosy drugs inh vincristi predominant sensory diabetes amyloidosis alcoholics vitamin b12 jogrens they all lead to predominantly sensory loss is what we need to remember now coming to the sensory involvement symmetrical sensory loss right left 
both the sides symmetrically sensory loss diabetes carcinomas hiv vitamin b12 they are all symmetrical sensory loss similarly cisplatin thalidomide pyridoxin these three you should remember for symmetrical sensory loss then asymmetrical sensory loss and distal weakness if it is a single nerve involved you think of a compressive mononeuropathy if it is multiple nerves involved think of vasculitis leprosy etc etc then once more what is the difference between axonal neuropathy demyelinating neuropathy clinically how do you differentiate between these two is a favorite question of the examiner generally doctor Axonal neuropathies have distal involvement like classically most of the neuropathies. But demyelinating will have both proximal and distal. In axonal neuropathies, ankle jerk is lost very early. S1. Whereas proximal tendon reflexes are well preserved. Whereas all reflexes are uniformly lost early if it is a demyelinating neuropathy. Muscle wasting is more classically seen in axonal neuropathy, whereas relatively absent in a demyelinating neuropathy. CS of proteins are normal in axonal neuropathy, but demyelination also involves the demyelination of the brain, and CS of proteins can get elevated, as in the case of uh, any demyelinating pathology. The recovery is more rapid if it is demyelinating. Often demyelinating, there is some autoimmunity involved, and if you give steroid or a IV immunoglobulin patients will have recovery, but axonal neuropathy recovery is very slow. And there is a residual deformity commonly seen in case of the axonal neuropathy, and uh, nerve conduction is lowered, decreased in demyelinating neuropathy. So, this differences of axonal demyelinating neuropathy is a favorite MCQ. That is the reason I am trying to once more ask you. Bookmark, set up a reminder for this point. Very important. Then once more, doctor, narrow fibers are divided depending upon their diameter and conduction velocity into large fiber and small fiber. Small fibers are mainly involved with your pain and temperature. Large fibers are more often involved with your vibration and touch and proprioception. So those who have large fiber sensory loss. They will have sensory ataxia, eryflexia, and Romberg positive classically. So, how do you differentiate the two? Small fiber may hota hai loss of pain and temperature. Large fiber may hota hai vibration and uh, position is very important. Then, reflexes and motor function, they are preserved in small fiber neuropathy and reflexes are lost very early and motor functions are impaired in large fiber neuropathy. Then small fiber neuropathies may severe spontaneous pain and autonomic dysfunction is classically seen. But there is no such phenomena in large fiber neuropathy. And large fiber neuropathies may, there is an impairment of nerve conduction velocity but small fiber is always electrophysiologically silent is what you have to ultimately remember. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. You must be doubly sure. Any question on neuropathy, it is no more enigmatic topic for you. What is the drug that you use in amyotopic lateral steroid? Riluzol is the drug which is a glutamate blocker. It inhibits the voltage dependent sodium presynaptic neuron and release the Decrease the release of the glutamate used in the amyotropic lateral sclerosis is what you have to ultimately remember. Hexanucleotide repeats. Where do you find them? Once more, in motor neuron disease. Harek Sal, Stephen Hawkins ke yad, yad me, need a PG examiner, ek motor neuron disease unke server me. Standard topic hai, usko chodna baat. Very important, right? So, G, 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 C, C, hexanucleotide repeat expansion, intronic to the chromosome 9, 
is the one which is identified to be abnormal in case of the motor neuron disease is what need to be remembered. Urine urge hone ke liye how much bladder if it filled with uh, how many ml of urine you get the urge. So this is once more a numerical question. 150 ml will lead to the sufficient amount of urge. Fasciculations that that uh, feeling that uh, something is creeping in my muscles like a wave is called fasciculation. Where do you see? In element type. So once more doctor, UMN versus element. Pela, UMN kya hai? Kya hota hai? Bolo. UMN hota hai corticospinal tract. Where does it start doctor? It starts in the motor cortex, in the pyramidal cells of the beds. Is the location. So, from the pyramidal cells of beds, the fibers pass through the internal capsule, descend down through the brain stem, midbrain, pons, and medulla. And in the medulla, they decussate the contralateral side and ultimately reach the androcon cell in the spinal cord. In the spinal cord. So, any problem from here up to androcon cell, not including androcon cell, is called as UMN. But androcon cell. And the spinal nerves until neuromuscular junction's presynaptic membrane, you call it as element. Once more, my muscle postsynaptic membrane or synaptic uh, cleft, they don't come under element. So, there is a reason reflexes are not affected in myasthenia gravis, but reflexes are diminished in Lambert Eaton, which is problem in the presynaptic membrane. Reflexes are diminished, deep tendon reflexes are diminished in case of the neuropathies. Reflexes are diminished whenever androcon cell is destroyed. That is what you have to ultimately remember. So, the fundamental question first year clinicals may you are all taught is LMN may hota hai flaccid paralysis. First example is poliomyelitis. How will be the muscle? Muscle will be very shabby. Upper motor neuron may spastic. If you go to any stroke patient, he will have increased tone. Spasticity, plasticity are a marker of what? Tone. Increased tone. Tone is different from power. Don't forget. Weakness is power. Tone is different. Tone. High tone is spasticity in UMN. Hyperreflexia in UMN, hypertonia in UMN, and uh, there are two types of hypertonia decorticate rigidity, decerebrate rigidity. Below the midbrain, if the corticospinal tract is damaged, then you get decerebrate rigidity, and above the midbrain and the brain, that's called decorticate rigidity. The muscle mass in LMN. There will be a wasting of the muscles, classically like a poliomyelitis is an element. Whereas upper motor neuron may, because of the high tone, patient cannot be able to regularly use it. If you don't use it regularly, it becomes atrophy. That's called disuse atrophy. Right, doctor? So, fasciculations, the creeping sensations, there are features of element. Babinski is in UMN. And uh, abdominal reflex, remastic reflex, they are all lost in UMN. And uh, the voluntary movement is decreased speed in UMN, but it's completely lost in LMN. And uh, UMN lesions involve large areas of body, whereas LMN lesions, for example, if you have poliomyelitis, it only involves uh, one particular quadriceps muscle instead of diffusely. So, it is a small area in case of the element is what you need to remember. Urinary bladder ko di pass kare to Christmas tree appearance kaha dikta hai. If it is a neurogenic bladder leading to the detrusor spasm, that lead to the Christmas tree pattern. Can you be able to see this Christmas tree pattern of the contrast doctor? So, this is typically an example of a neurogenic bladder is what you have to remember. So, this first reappearance with the contrast in the x-ray. 
विटामिन ई डिफिशियंसी में व्हाट आर द इंपॉर्टेंट मैनिफेस्टेशंस इट लीड टू सेरिबलर एटैक्सिया विटामिन ई इज अ प्रिंसिपल एंटीऑक्सीडेंट इफ इट इज नॉट देयर देयर एवर लार्ज नंबर ऑफ फ्री रेडिकल्स फॉर्म लाइक द नर्व्स लाइक द ब्रेन लाइक द आरबीसीज दे ऑल गेट अफेक्टेड सो पोस्टर कॉलम हेमोलाइटिक एनीमिया सेरिबलर एटैक्सिया weakness difficulty in walking there all the features of the vitamin e deficiency once more examiner asking vitamin e deficiency may it lead to ataxia is what you have to remember what are the other important antioxidant selenium which is a part of the glutathione peroxidase if selenium is not there you get kashan's cardiomyopathy is what you need to remember what is a feature of extra pyramidal tract involvement is the examiner's question once more doctor pyramidal to cortico spinal tract hai what are those four tracts which are called extra pyramidal is a very very important question those who attended the previous evenings can you be able to answer right अब तो हम अक्टूबर 15 ऑनवर्ड्स वी स्टार्टेड द चाय पे चर्चा सेशंस ऑन यूट्यूब थैंक यू सम ऑफ यू एवरी डे यू आर पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन दिस सेशन गिविंग इंस्पिरेशन टू द टीचर बाय दिस नवंबर 15 विदाउट नोइंग ओनली 60 डेज हैव पास्ड इन आवर कंपेनियनशिप राइट एवरी डे इवनिंग विदाउट अ फेलियर फॉर ऑल एस सो कॉर्टिको स्पाइनल ट्रैक कम्स डाउन इंटरनल कैप्सूल से निकल के ब्रेन स्टेम में मिड ब्रेन पॉन्स मेडुला को क्रॉस करके मेडुला में ऑपोजिट साइड में जाके स्पाइनल कॉर्ड में एंड्रोकॉन सेल को कंट्रोल करेगा ये कॉर्टिको स्पाइनल ट्रैक बट दैट इज नॉट इनफ दंड्रोकॉन सेल इज ऑल्सो कंट्रोल्ड बाय four more tracts what are they rubro spinal tract cerebellum hai na cerebellum will send the fibers to superior cerebellar peduncle to the red nucleus red nucleus will in turn tell to thalamus thalamus in turn will go and tell to the sensory cortex so this red nucleus hello also sends the fibers and controls the endocrine cell that's called rubro spinal the midbrain tectum tecto spinal fibers will come in control reticulo spinal you are having reticulo spinal so rubro spinal reticulo spinal tecto spinal these are all the things in addition to cortico spinal are controlling the endocrine cells so any problem in the basal ganglia red nucleus thalamus or uh, the midbrain tectum that will also affect the endocrine cell so they what the patients get is once more that is also an example of a upper motor neuron only but what kind of upper motor neuron what is the difference between pyramidal versus extra pyramidal lesions what is the main difference there is one more nucleus that vestibular nucleus is there no that also sends fibers to the endocrine cell so vestibular spinal rubro spinal reticulo spinal tecto spinal this four are called the extra pyramidal tract so any problem that happens to these tracts like basal ganglia problem or the vestibular nucleus problem that lead to what is called as extra pyramidal weakness how does it present typically it also lead to hypertonicity because of the loss of the inhibition on the endocrine cell but it affects both the extensor and flexor muscles equally well both of them will become hypertonic so if you try to 
expand the elbow joint of a patient who is having extra pyramidal throughout the motion there is a resistance what is that called a rigidity is what you need to remember whereas the hypertonicity caused by the pyramidal tract lesion affects the flexors more than the extensors so initially there is a resistance but as you expand it there is a giving up that is called clasp knife type of resistance which is called spasticity is what you need to remember so there is a difference between pyramidal and extra pyramidal whereas the androhorn cell itself is damaged then that is called the lower motor neuron lesion where there is a flaccidity hypotonicity is what you have to ultimately remember so doc you have all these tracks which are going to affect the androhorn cell and the main differences of pyramidal and extra pyramidal please don't forget to punch this uh, uh, slide on the u medico app for you to remember and extra pyramidal lesions may take best example is parkinsonism wilson's disease bradykinesia involuntary movements postural instability hypertonia but there is no loss of power pyramidal tract may hemiplegia aata na power bhi kam ho jata pyramidal mein magar extra pyramidal mein like pyramidal there is a increased tone but there is no loss of the power of the muscle is what you have to basically remember so uh this brings us to the end of this topic let us quickly take up the quiz doctor today saturday means thoda jaldi ghar jayenge theek hai so uh tomorrow please don't forget 9 to 12 you have a test questions rolling and uh, 12 to 3 i'll be there to discuss at least 100 questions important questions that is a whole idea in plan okay doc now uh some of you were asking uh, sir questions de rahe hain magar answers nahi de rahe ha huh? so what i just thought is let us both give one slide with question with uh, next i mean without with uh, without answer and next is with answer like that i will try to set up the powerpoint slide show except those questions which i am going to discuss so isse kya ho jata bole to you are getting the answers immediately and then anyway, during discussion you will get answers of those questions that i discuss let's do that that way yeah so but please come at 9 o'clock and then uh, 9 to 12 quickly take it like a test a powerpoint slide show right doc so let's make the great beginning very good already aap sab log serotonin bol rahe hain badhiya that's good most reliable marker of hypothyroidism should be an answer yes doc so i can see uh hypothyroidism ka 122 very happy to see 231 online students hamara abadi badh raha hai right so who are the new students doctor please punch first time attending today is a wonderful evening first or second time please punch don't forget to download the u medico app subscribe to the channel ask your friends to subscribe to this youtube channel you will get notification of every day class very good tsl absolutely right wool chaikov's effect where do you see right kunal boyer is the first timer kunal i want to see you every day evening 5:30 to 8:30 pm we have a session on the same channel across the year until you get the seat vaishali sharma excellent so please give a call to the helpline they will help you to subscribe you to give you subscription to u medico app we have all the video libraries and uh, for a throw away prize you get a subscription to review the video library and mock test 
so this session is free tell your friends also to join very good excessive iodine has got an inhibitory effect on the thyroxine production not a feature of thyrotoxicosis 124 yes thyrotoxicosis 124 yes give a loud answer Ravi thinks weight loss is not a feature oh my god Ravi don't break my heart weight gain hypo thyrotoxicosis weight loss very good most of you are betting on D absolutely aminoria not menorrhagia proptosis is not a feature of food situation 125 these are all FMG questions. In the quiz, we will use all the FMG question bank. Some questions are very sharp. If you casually answer, you will go wrong. Best single liners are all FMG question bank. 125. Ritwik is proposing C. Aparna. PSH. No, that was a previous question. Okay. Uh, 125. Abhay Raj Chauhan says when lecture ends. Every day 5.30 to 6 there is a online quiz. 6 to 7.30 we have a review. And 7.30 to 8 or 8.15 we have a quiz and uh, interaction. Pura 365 days hamara jindagi aise hi badega. Until you get the seed. And this three hours, we should give you inspiration to read the whole day. There is a whole idea of these evening sessions. So please do call our helpline number, which is given below. Uh, and they will help you to get the uh, UMedico subscription at the cheapest price. Where you have this entire video library. Yeah. Now, everyone is saying, except D. That's right. Not mixed edema. Plumber Vincent, what is except? 126. Question number 126. Revati is proposing anemia. Anemia is a classical thing, na Revati. Iron deficiency anemia is a classical feature. Ritwik says glossite. Is it lower esophageal web or upper esophageal web or mid esophageal web? Aur ek bar jaake aap dekhna padega. Right? That's good. About growth hormone deficiency, what is except about? 127. Yes, doc. Growth hormone deficiency. Yes. So, Below this broadcast, you have a share button. Share button is there, right? So, please don't forget to click on the share and uh, share it to all your Facebook friends and uh, uh, your Gmail friends, etc, etc. Please do click on the share button below. That will help us to uh, promote this program with a viral spread across. That is the greatest help you will be doing. Click on the share button below. Likes and share. Yeah, that's right. Upper esophageal, absolutely, Abhishek. Yes. Questions are simple, answers are complex. Very good. Uh, hypoglycemia. You should remember catecholamines, growth hormone, um, thyroxin, they all lead to hyperglycemia, is what you need to remember. Steroids. Vitamin D, D deficiency has all these things except what? Question number 128. Question number 128. You are living? Yeah. 128. Ravi proposes hyper nahi hota, hypo hota hai. Ravi jindabad. That's good Ravi. Proud of you. Right? Then... Um, Dasari also correct answer. Ashima also correct. Absolutely. Hyperparathyroidism may 
what is the type of magnesium or phosphatemia that you see? Once more a similar question, 129. Yes. Hyperparathyroidism. One twenty nine. Question number one twenty nine. Good. Ankur proposes hypophosphatemia, and uh, Kunal Boyer also saying hypophosphatemia. J. Prakash, clean bowl. So what J. Prakash uh, Rajaram should do is uh, when everyone is correctly answering. Why I am answering wrong, he need to go back. That is very important. That is the whole purpose of our academic community on everyday evening. Okay, doc. Right. So, question number 130. Mithun, Ravi, everyone is saying atrial fibrillation may there is no A wave because A wave is because of the atrial contraction during the last one third of the ventricular diastole. And that will be missing if the atria is fibrillating. Can on A waves, where do you see? Where when the atrium is contracting, the blood will go and hit the AV valve. Where do you see is an important question. Yes, doctor. Ravi Kumar is proposing junctional tachycardia. That's good. And um, Sunita. Ankurlal is proposing junctional tachycardia, but Dasharat Singh uh, is clean ball. Severe mitral stenosis may. What are the uh, important uh, differences? Is a interesting question. Severe mitral stenosis. Yes. So. Uh, yes, 132. Ravi Kumar is proposing duration of mid diastolic murmur talks about the severity or intensity. 132. Priyanka also saying C means we should agree. That is the answer. The duration, not shorter the duration, greater is the severity of the um, uh, of the Mitral stenosis. What would you do immediately after a cardiac arrest? Is a very important question. 133. Yes. Will you check for breathing? ABC. ABC is the easy thing to remember. 133. I am seeing uh, uh, Raj proposing C. J. Prakash Rajaram, superb, chest compression. P wave in ECG is because of what? A easy single liner. Uh, P wave in ECG. Yes, doc. So, you know, P wave, Q, R, S, T wave, easy question. Atrial depolarization, absolutely. Hyperkalemia may bohot changes hota hai, magar sabse mahan change kya hota hai is the question of the examiner. Question number 135. Should you answer, doctor? Yes. Uh, 135. J. Prakash Rajaram is saying tall tented T waves are early. Vishal Lakshmi uh, want to bet on the D, but Jay Prakash Rajaram Jindabad, Raghupati Raghava Rajaram, tall tented P wave, absolutely right. Dressler syndrome after myocardial infarction, where there is an autoimmune reaction, okay, what is incorrect about it? 136, should your answer, yes. Now, uh, today I tried uh, to see how will be the broadcast on the Google Hangout on AIR. 
one more way to broadcast live in the YouTube. The quality is exceptionally good. Now what we can do is, if you volunteer, three or four students want to volunteer to answer the question with their video cam on the smartphone, please volunteer to our helpline, please send a your email ID, I want to volunteer to be a live broadcasted student participating in the quiz. So what we will do is, we will start a Google Hangout for uh, the discussion. You can participate in that and uh, you can uh, give your answers with your voice and video. And uh, as usual, all other students will be participating from the chat. So by doing that, uh, it will be like uh, a more exciting thing when three or four of you are live also along with me in the show. So those who are interested to participate tomorrow's uh, uh, Sunday test discussion live you want to keep giving answers um, with your video cam. Simple on your uh, phone you just uh, will get an invitation to join my Google Hangout on 8. Just join. And as I ask, as we discuss questions, you give your answers, others also will be punching. Lot of excitement will be there. So those who want to do that, so please uh, volunteer it, WhatsApp to our helpline number and uh, send your uh, Gmail ID. So tomorrow we will give you the opportunity to be part of uh, the Google Hangout based broadcast. Okay. So, Mithul Hiran is asking what phone number we will we send our Gmail ID to volunteer to be part. Uh, 9000-868-356, our helpline. Please say that I want to participate live into this talk show. Right? Right. Uh, right. So, Treatment with steroids is not going to help in this uh, subset of people. So who like to participate? Be sure tomorrow we will send you the link of the Google Hangout. Uh, just join it with your uh, smartphone and uh, you can be able to start answering. And uh, you five or six people and me, the show will be watched by everyone else and they are also participating. That will be a lot of excitement. I want to try that. If it works, no? Oh my God. I am going to have a lot of teachers who will be ready to uh, conduct more number of live interactive shows to inspire you across the day. Okay? That's right. So, now, now it is a hypertension that leads to development of aortic dissection. Seema, Vishwakarma and Commandant are clean bowl. Now, MIMA, what is a very specific marker? Specific marker of myocardial infarction. Right. Commandant is asking, from where do you get uh, such ideas? From October 15th, I got a new job to become the teacher to Ravi Kumar and Commandant. How to become more innovative? I think life is all very innovative every day with all you. Right? So, we will make it a count banega karodapati for the PG entrance. Every day. Enjoyable. That's the whole idea. Getting inspired in this couple of hours. So, that's good. Throw up in I. Sandeep, Sweetie, everyone, but Sweetie is clean bowl. Troponinai is a specific marker. What are the drugs that are used for the secondary prevention of MI? 139. Yes. 139, secondary prevention of MI. Shoot your answer. Subhash, Adhikari, Ravi are proposing warfarin. Excellent. Beta blocker, statins and aspirin. They all have a role is what you need to remember. 
reverse splitting of S2 where P2 comes early, A2 comes later. Where do you get it? Where do you get the situation where aortic valve closes a little early and pulmonic valve is getting more and more delayed to close leading to the reverse split of the S2. Rocket Raider proposes pulmonic stenosis. Sayyad Aizad says the same. Only Shabazz is thinking pulmonary hypertension. No doctor. Aortic stenosis may aortic valve become so delayed that it occur after the pulmonic valve closure and that lead to development. Very good, Sam Singh. Thank you that you volunteered to come on to the uh, Google Hangout tomorrow. They claim a who is good, who is right, who is better. Amne samne they claim it, right? Spardhaya vardhade vidya. Always we should enjoy any SWAT fight, and uh, that is that whole excitement should be a driving force. Very good. So please uh, send uh, Samsung your uh, Gmail ID to our uh, helpline and uh, they will send you a link, click it on, you are on the broadcast. But only thing is just to sit in a place where there is not a lot of noise, eh? that is important, right. So I get uh, most of you saying yay, that's right. What is the ECG finding in hyperkalemia is my question to all of you. So all dyselkalitemias, ECG changes is a favorite question doctor. Yeah. Should your answer? Hyperkalemia may, what do you see? Good. I can see Subhash thinking wide QRS, Vanisri thinking T wave inversion. Very good. Most of you are saying D. So Vanisri should think. अरे क्या बात है सब लोग बोल रहे हैं वाइड क्यों आ रहे हैं अकेला मैं बोल रहा हूँ टी वेव इन्वर्शन तो वानिश्री शुड गो बैक फिक्स इट अप दैट दिस इज़ द टॉपिक दैट शी वांटेड टू रिवाइज दैट इज़ हाउ दिस ग्रुप डिस्कशन्स विल हेल्प करनरी आर्ट डिजीज़ में व्हाट आर ऑल द एसोसिएटेड रिस्क फैक्टर्� Yes, one strong answer. Subhash proposes alcohol. Ravi thinks poor dental hygiene. Alcohol, doctor. If you don't wash your mouth twice a day, you get cat. Coronary artery disease. Right. Pericardial cyst. Where do you see? Classical, you see in where? Yes. Seema and everybody, absolutely right. Uh, yes. Shamas, come on, alcohol, no doubt. Subhash Adhikari is proposing middle mediastinum. So also Dasri. Cardiophrenic angle, doctor. Pericardiophrenic pericardial cyst. You can see in Google images. See, most of you are attracted to the wrong answer of middle mediastinum. Sweetie also. Snowman appearance or figure of eight appearance. Question number 144. 144. Yes. Uh, can you give one answer? Snowman or a figure of eight appearance. Good. Roger thinks PA PVC. Most of you. But Dr. Siggy is thinking B. So, very easy. Repeatedly asked question. Wide pulse, pulse pressure with a hyperdynamic circulation. Where do you see? It's a favorite question. Yes. Wide pulse pressure. 
in a hyperdynamic circulation. Rocket traded things, aortic regurgitation, absolutely right. Canon A waves, once more, where do you see? At least now, correctly answer a repetition I am asking you. Aur ek bar bolo, bar bar bolo. Canon A waves kaha hota hai? 146? Yes. So once more, JVP is one topic, doctor. You should all read. Very good. Junctional rhythm. Unilateral fetal edema. Most common cause is what? Uh, 147. Yes. So, unilateral fetal edema. Ravi thinks Milroy. Ali Akhtar thinks lymphedema. Sudha thinks pregnancy. Shabas thinks lymphedema. Venous insufficiency, doctor, that lead to development of the, as J. Prakash Rajaram rightly says. What do you see in hypertrophic obstructive cardio myopathy? Iska answer right jo bolta na, wo cardiologist bande ka ready hai. 148. Come on, let me see. Beautiful question. Which of the following is seen? Ravi, Jay Prakash, Revati, Roger. Ha. Sandeep bol raha hai systolic. Ritika Bandari also. Clean bowl. Yuvashri also clean bowl. Mano Shinde clean bowl. Diastolic dysfunction, doctor, in hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. There is an explanation for this. I can explain you, honey. So, you go back to the U Medico video library, medicine, DNB question bank, mein medicine, Usme HOCM topic, please review. By the time you are out of this session, I hope U Medico new version in Google Play Store might have come. Please enjoy the notes feature. Now, according to the revised guidelines, which drug is not recommended in the cardiac arrest? Regularly, American Cardiac Association keep changing its protocols. So, what is not, what is uh, not recommended? Yes, doctor. Yes. Should you answer? Very good. I can see uh, Vanishri is proposing Amidaron. Swami Mandal thinks Atropine. Commandant thinks Vasopressine. Mandal is absolutely right. So also Krishna Saumya, proud of you, baby. Very good. Now, a patient presented with deficiency of thymine. What is the possible outcome? The last question for the today's evening. Should you answer, doctor? Um, thymine deficiency may kya nahi rehta. Before you become PG Pati, neat PG Pati of 2019. Ravi, Ravi, don't break my heart. Okay. Possible outcome, huh? very good, very good. Uh, Nigom bomb, clean ball, right? Uh, very good. Nigom bomb is right. I mean, uh, may, of course, there can be wet beriberi or Korsakov psychosis with memory loss. Both of them are possible, both B and C, right? So both B and C are correct. So thank you once more to all of you. Wonderful guys watching this show. Those who are first timers, please don't forget to punch to 
uh, WhatsApp, our uh, helpline. And those who like to join tomorrow's broadcast, please do send. We will do a Google Hangout. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful weekend evening. Thank you.